Hello everyone, my name is Mitchell Foster, my pronouns are they and them, and I am the coordinator for residence education for Fuchsia Hall. And this afternoon, I'm gonna be joining you in touring, or in this live tour of Fuchsia Hall. Perfect, glad to have you. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah, and then when we have people tuning in, uh, feel free to tell us where you're from. And um, yeah, if you're gonna be staying here at Fuchsia, we wanna know. Absolutely. So I moved here from Northern California. I got my master's degree at California State University in Chico. Um, and immediately after my master's, I got this job as a full-time coordinator for residence education at the University of Arkansas. So I have lived here for two years now. Um, and this is also um, my second year going into my third year as the coordinator for residence education for both Holcomb and Futural Hall. Um, today, again, as I mentioned, we are going to be touring Futural Hall, and next week we will also be touring Holcomb, so stay tuned for that too. Yeah, well, we're outside. Uh, what do you see around here? What, what, what can we tell people about this area of the, of the this area of campus? Absolutely. So Futural Hall is a, in a very strategic area of campus because it's very close to three different important facilities. One is the bookstore. So the bookstore is literally right across Futural um, to the north of the building. Um, so for any of your needs um, with your textbooks or school supplies, the bookstore has all of those needs for you all and it's very, very close. Um, the other thing that's close is to the south of the building um, is the Union. Um, and the Union has a lot of, um, re of student organizations. The Associated Student Government is in the Union and we also have the food court in the Union as well for your meal trade. So that's pretty close. And then the last thing that's really close to Futural is Fulbright Dining Hall. Um, over at that side um, of the street um, and Fulbright Dining Hall is where Holcomb and Futural students usually go to um, when they want to go and grab some. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, well, sounds good. And then I noticed there's some carts here. Well, those are pretty new. Yep. Um, the, uh, the, the, the motorized scooters, right? Yeah. We got this about maybe like the start of the spring or maybe a little bit earlier mm -hmm. than that, like late fall. And it has been a hit for all of the students. Um, they, some students would, you know, rent one of these to get to their classes if their classes are on the other side of campus. It's very convenient. I ride them myself um, and it's very fun too, especially on the weekends when you just want to scoot around and see, you know, the town, the square or Dixon or whatever. Nice. Nice. Well, thanks. Yeah. So we'll head inside then. Let's, let's go. Yeah, let's head inside because it's really hot outside. It is. It's definitely Arkansas summer weather. <laughs> All right, so um, as residents of this hall, um, you will get a fob, um, and this fob is what you, were, you will use to enter the building, and so basically you just scan it, and once it turns green, it means that it's unlocked and you can walk in. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, Mitchell, we did have one question come in already. We'll head inside. Yeah. Uh, Deborah asks, what are the dining halls doing to address social distancing? And I'll, I, I can address some of that. We just put out a new FAQ on our housing website, which explains what some of dining is doing. Um, one thing that they're doing is they're not having any uh, self-serve bars. Um, really encouraging uh, pickup of meals so that they can be eaten remotely when you take them out. I don't know, is there anything else that you can think of offhand? I think you got it. Um, and if you want more information about that, other than what Christopher was saying, go into the housing website and there's um, a link that says um, COVID um, plans, plans yeah. um, and you could click on that. And one of the FAQs is actually about meal plans. So. And we just put new content up yesterday regarding that. So hopefully Deborah, we've, we can address some of your questions there. If you have anything further, you are welcome to email us at housing at uark.edu. Thank you. All right, really good question, Deborah. Keep the questions coming, y'all. All right, so currently we are at the front desk of Futural. I'm sorry, I have to like always constantly check my mask because it's like falling. Mm -hmm. um, but we are in the first floor um, of Futural at the front desk. Um, this is our front desk area. 
Um, we have a plexi um, guard for um, all of the students and also for all of our RAs who are going to be manning these desks. And so basically as residents and as students, every time you go to the desk, we expect you to be on the other side of the plexiglass just so we could protect everyone involved in any conversation that may be happening in the front desk. Um, but the front desk is where um, our RDAs, which is the resident um, desk assistant and RAs are gonna be um, situated um, throughout the day um, to be of service to our residents. Um, and so they could help the residents with any questions that they have. Um, one thing about Futural um, is that we don't receive mail and packages in the building. So for all residents in Futural, you have to go to the building across the street where Fulbright is um, to get your mail and packages. And it's not that inconvenient because it's very close. And not only is it very close, because Fulbright is in that same building called Morgan Hall across the street, it's easy to just go across the street, grab your package, and then go get something to eat. Or you could like go get something to eat first and when, when you're on your way out, you could grab your packages and your mails. Very nice. And that's really a central point for all of North Campus. All of the North Campus residents tend to go to Fulbright for breakfast and usually dinner. Oftentimes they're in Central Campus and go to Bruff uh, during the day when they're taking classes. But yeah, those are, it's a very, very popular dining hall right there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, so this is the front desk mm -hmm. and um, we have defunct um, mailboxes right here. Um, and these are just purely decorative. Um, these are not functional in any way. So when you walk in and you see this, it's just there to, to give aesthetics to our first floor. Purely aesthetic mailboxes, exactly. nice, okay. <laughs> exactly, all right. So now we're gonna be heading to the first floor um, study area and TV lounge. And I'm gonna show you the study area first as we walk towards this way. Great, and again, if anybody, uh, we'd love to know where you're, where you're watching from, if it's here in Arkansas or in Texas or Missouri or even further away, let us know. All right, so right now we are on the first floor study lounge in Futural, um, which is basically encased um, by, the, by, by this glass encasing. We have socially distanced tables and chairs in there, um, and we also have um, a piano in there for anyone who wants to maybe practice their piano skills. Patty, glad you're tuning in from Texas. We appreciate that. All right, and further down this way. We do have a question. Yeah. Mitchell, if you're ready. Yeah. Um, Joy asks, does Futural have an elevator? Futural does not have an elevator, um, well at least not have a functional elevator. Um, so we have four flights of steps all the way to the fourth floor um, and we would, I would definitely um, uh, advise you all that if you're moving in, move in in small chunks and small bits so that you're not carrying a lot up the stairs um, and that will make the trips easier for you because it's going to be a few trips um, to move up, especially if you're on like the upper levels and upper floors of Futural. Which it goes to a maximum of four floors, is that right? Yes, four floors, including the basement, it's five floors, but from the, from the um, front door that we entered, it's four floors up, including the first floor. And then Michelle from uh, Texas and Deborah from Arkansas, glad to see you, glad to have you. Hi, y'all. <laughs> All right, so um, now we're walking towards the TV lounge of Futural. Um, we have different types of chairs um, for just people hanging out or students hanging out. We have um, more socially distanced tables here for studying. Um, usually this is where future students just chill after a long day um, when they just want to hang out with their friends um, or this is also where they study. Of course, within the COVID pandemic, we will be expecting students to socially distance from each other and if they can't socially distance for them to wear a mask, um, and that's going to be an expectation for everyone who is going to be living in Futural. Absolutely. And Joy uh, came back and said her daughter's on the third floor. So awesome. three floors for you. Not too bad, hopefully. Too yeah. Bad. Very right. excited to meet um, everyone coming in in August. They're definitely going to be seeing me. <laughs> Great. All right. So now we're heading towards the basement. Um, and I'm going to all show you 
the basement lounge. We're gonna show you the kitchen, which is the communal kitchen that everyone is gonna be using. Um, and we're gonna be showing you the theater room as well. Um, one thing about um, kitchen is that we highly encourage you all to bring your, your cooking utensils, your pots and pans, if you all need or want to cook for the rest of the school year. Um, so that you could have your own and you could sanitize your own as you go along or go through the year. All right. We'll head down the stairs now, down to the basement area. But it's not a, it's not a dingy basement. It's actually a wonderful community space down here. A lot of space, really. All right. So now... Um, we are just walking into the base, a wide area for different activities. Um, we have a ping pong table, we have um, a pool table, and we have more seating and more spaces um, for studying, for group meetings, maybe for group projects um, for the students. Um, and we even have the bars up here where I always see students also studying in the bars. Um, and again, I want to reiterate this if you're just coming in, um, one of the biggest expectations that we have for all of the students this year is to socially distance from each other and wear masks so that we could protect everyone's health and the health and safety of the community as well. Um, and of course, um, make sure um, to sanitize always everything that you've been touching. Um, we have ISAs, which is our institutional service assistants or our custodial staff that will sanitize all of the common spaces every single day um, for the benefit and the safety of all of our students. But if you could be proactive and also carry your own um, disinfectant wipes to wipe like the surfaces that you're gonna be using as a student or for your students, that would also be highly, highly ideal. You know, it's interesting you say all that, Mitchell, because uh, it's like you're reading the question that got asked. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Deborah, Deborah was asking about how will it be managed that we, you know, make sure students follow the rules for social distancing. And I guess I would say that there's probably two levels of that. One would be here at the university. We do have, you know, the first thing we're trying to do is say, hey, please put on your mask. Uh, always trying to go there first to say, please follow these practices. We want you to be part of the community. And, and behave in that fashion. But we do have the ability to use the student uh, conduct code to you know, take progressive discipline if that's needed. Um, also, the state of Arkansas now is requiring it. So then you actually have um, an executive order where there's its own level of penalties. But, but nobody, wants it to come, nobody wants it to come to that. So we're hopeful that we'll all be kind of razorbacks together and, and try, to, try to do the best we can and, and keep each other safe. Absolutely. You hit that right on the head, Christopher. Um, let's see what else we're we have in this space. Okay, let's all walk towards the theater room. Mm -hmm. um, so the theater room is basically um, a room with lazy boy chairs and a TV and a DVD player for students to use if they want to watch a movie with friends, um, if they, they just want to get together. Mm -hmm. Do you have to like rent it out or are there like regular showings or how does that work? It is a first come first serve. So okay. you don't have to rent it out. Um, but if you come in and you are already watching the TV, usually there's a community expectation um, that if you're already in there that no one has the right to like, you know, shoo you away or like ask you to leave for their own, you know, purposes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Nice. That's a big, that's a big one. Yep. Theater room with lazy boy chairs. Mm -hmm. And our equipment up here. Yeah. yeah so um, again, students could just come in. There are remotes in there um, to use the equipment, the TV um, and the DVD player for their leisure. Perfect. All part of what you pay for when you live here. Absolutely. All right. Um, now we're heading towards the kitchen, mm -hmm. the communal kitchen. Can, um, I, can I take a minute to, to point out the uh, tabletop here? Yeah. I really like it. <laughs> it says U of A hogs. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah. 
You have to read upside down, unfortunately. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right. So now we're walking towards our kitchen. Mm -hmm. So this is the communal kitchen for Futural. It's the only kitchen that we have in the building. Um, we have an electric, electric stove in here, so we don't have a gas stove. Um, we have two sinks. We have a microwave. And we also have um, a fridge for students to use. We had another question about how often will the bathrooms be cleaned and sanitized? Uh, I know it's, uh, well, I, I don't want to misspeak here. I'm, do you happen to know how often they get cleaned? It will be cleaned every single day. So okay. even before the pandemic, um, we have institutional service assistants that clean um, and disinfect our bathrooms every single day of operations. Um, and it's the same thing with the kitchens and with um, the common spaces that I mentioned earlier. Fridge. Thank you, Mitchell. And then another thing, because we're talking about the fridge, um, one expectation that we have of the students who live on campus or who live in traditional style dorms is that if they use the fridge for storage to make sure that they're um, putting all of their stuff in a plastic bag or in a container with their name on it so that they could separate it from the stuff of other people so that we could also um, avoid contamination and avoid mixing of um, different items and belongings in there. Labeling your food in a communal fridge. That's, that's just a good skill, no yep. matter who you are. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Exactly. All right, so we've currently seen um, the basement um, lounge, the theater lounge, and the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take you all to the laundry room of Futural Hall. I'm pretty sure um, everyone watching um, is also very curious about where are your students going to wash your, their clothes and where are they, your students going to dry their clothes. So it's going to be in here. It's kind of loud in here, so I'm going to have to shout. So please bear with me. Please do. Um, so these are our washers and dryers and um, the use of the washers and dryers come with the fees that you pay um, when you live in the halls on campus. Great. And we'll step out for a second because it is really loud. Absolutely. Um, so one thing to point out is there's an app that University Housing offers called Laundry Alert and that allows you to see which laundry facilities are open, individual machines, as well as we'll send you a text message when you're done with your laundry. So it can be a really nice uh, asset to have there. And we do recommend the use of pods. They're just much cleaner and easier to use. Absolutely. Definitely, definitely agree with Christopher on that. Please use pods. It's easy. It's clean. It doesn't leave a mess. It, do it doesn't give room for any accidents. Um, and that's just, you know, easy for the institutional service assistant and the students as well. All right. Now that we've seen um, the laundry room, I'm going to take you all out to a space in Futural that is very unique to Futural, which is the courtyard. The outdoor courtyard. So this is the outdoor courtyard. It's very much enclosed. Um, students could use these tables and chairs to... Um, study if they want. They could have lunch out here. Of course, they're just going to have to um, avoid falling leaves from the tree, um, but that's definitely manageable. Um, another thing that's cool about Futural is that you could actually enter the building through the courtyard. So um, in the wall out there, there is an entrance um, that leads out to the resident reserve parking. So if your student has or was able to reserve a spot in the resident reserve parking, it's very easy to come in, park their car, and then go in from the entrance to the courtyard and into the doors that we just um, came out of. Perfect, perfect. All right. And if your students like hammocking, um, these two trees behind us um, is something that um, are, is very convenient for hammocking. So the students use both of those trees to um, attach their hammocks to, and they just basically lounge. <laughs> not a bad way to pass. Not a bad way to pass some time. And um, another safety feature is that we also have a fob access to this door, so no one, not just anyone, could enter these doors into Futural. If they don't have a fob, they're not going to be able to enter. Okay, sounds good. All right. So, um, 
<laughs> that's just the door. The door always makes itself known. It's, it's been open for a longer period of time. Um, but yeah, so we've seen the courtyard and now we're going up to um, the floor right above us. So I could show you all the community bathroom and then I could show you all um, the show space for the room mm -hmm. or the showroom. And we were asked about will there be multiple daily cleanings of the bathroom during fall. I think there'll be one, one very thorough cleaning every day. I might be wrong, but I think that's the case currently. Have you heard anything different? Um, I've heard that there will be extra measures for cleaning. But the great thing about the bathroom, and I actually had a conversation with my RA about this the other day, is that we are definitely going to encourage students to go in there to wash their hands. You know, like they go in there, their sinks, their soaps, they could always wash their hands. And of course, we would hope that everyone would be not using the bathrooms to hang out. Like we would hope that they would actually be socially distancing in the bathrooms. And not only that, to sanitize themselves as they go in and out. So it's definitely going to be a community effort. It's not just going to be an effort of one group of people, um, you know, maintaining the halls, but it's going to be the, the community effort and the effort of um, the students as well. So um, that's my job. Basically, my job is to always um, communicate with the students and to make sure that the students understand the expectations of the community so that we could maintain community health and safety. Very good. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go into the first floor and I'm going to show you all the community bathroom. Let's go take a look. I'm fond of your flamenco shirt. Thank you. <laughs> flamingos, flamingos are like my thing. Like I really, I, I feel like I own like six flamingo shirts, um, but I love, I love the pink color. I just, I love what they stand for. We're, we're learning things about you even as we go. Great. <laughs> OK, so this would be the bathroom. And yeah. let me just kind of give a pan to it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you can see, these are the sinks. Um, to one side of the bathroom, there are the showers mm -hmm. down here. And I'm pretty yeah. sure. Let's go take a look in a shower. Let's do. Yeah. Let's go. Um, so we have four stalls. Each floor has two community bathrooms. So we're showing you one of two um, to accommodate all of our students. Let me give some understanding of their little step there. Yeah. There we are. Fairly big space in there, honestly. Yeah, and there's like a changing area where you walk in and it's not immediately the shower, and then you go in further, and that's where the shower is. Yeah. And on the other side, um, we have the toilets. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of, you've seen one, you've seen them all, but right. we can take a look if you want. I, I doubt that. Exactly. Um, sure. Okay. Well, yeah. So it's, a, it's, and you've got, you said, uh, two yes. of these on every floor. Yes. One on the east wing and one on the west wing, but there's two on each floor. Perfect. Thank you. Wow. We'll go take a look at a room now. All right. And for, I think, you know, the most important part of this live, um, virtual live tour is the room, right? I'm pretty sure you all are tuning in to see the room. So we've prepared the show room for you all. Um, just so you have an idea on what a room or a traditional style room in Futural Hall looks like. So um, it's usually a double. Um, we have single rooms in Futural, but the doubles outnumber um, the singles by a huge ratio. So we have two desks, two twin XL beds. Um, we have two armoires. So this is one of the armoire. Would you mind opening one of them up so they can kind of see what the features are of the, of the dressers? Yeah, so we have two of this, one for each student. So one, one student would get that entire dresser? Yes, they will. Um, the fridge is um, just an example. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have fridges for rent for anyone who wants to rent out fridges. I'm not sure if that email has been sent out yet, but if it hasn't, please keep on the lookout for that. That may be a, still a service that we will be providing. Right, right. Well, um, I haven't got any requests for dimensions just yet, but why don't we go ahead and take one or two. Uh, why don't we do the mattress yeah. and go ahead and 
get that. Uh, Scott, you might be able to help. Mitchell is back. I don't know. So the length is 75 inches. 75 inches, okay. And the width is? Should be about 36. 36? Yeah, 36. 36 um, and that's a that's the door side. Let's look and see if the window side is any different. I don't remember if it is in this hall or not. It should be. They should be all identical. Mm -hmm. Yep, about 75. Okay. And 36. 75, 36. There you go. Great. Well, now is the perfect time if you have any questions that you want to ask us about anything in the room, because we will go and look at it as much as you'd like. So before the questions come in, I also want to highlight that each student would also get their own three drawer dresser. So underneath each desk, they will get that mini dresser. And then they will be sharing a six drawer dresser. So a dresser with six drawers. Um, for the both of them. Patty asks, how do the kids put up a bed skirt? How do the kids put up a bed skirt? My experiences of bed skirt is that that's something that you place under a mattress, right? Mm -hmm. And so the mattress, you could absolutely detach it and you could put the bed skirt from um, the spring and then it falls down onto the floor. Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, I think these are like all the others in that they are loftable. Yes, they are loftable. Um, you could place um, a service request as early as now um, if you want your student's um, bed to be loftable. Uh, I'm pretty sure that email has already been sent out because I've been talking to my facilities person, my building facilities person, and he has already been getting a lot of requests for different rooms um, to want to loft their bed. So that is an option for you all. Please check your emails. It should be somewhere in there. Um, and Patty follows up with, do they use a tension rod when the bed is lofted? And I'm trying to think this particular version, I believe it does. So yes. So um, when it's lofted, they definitely use a tension board to make sure, or the, yeah, the tension mm -hmm. um, thing rod. to make sure, or rod, yes, to make sure that um, it's very stable. Um, and we add... We add one more um, of these um, head and foot pieces on top of it yes. and then loft the bed up that way and then do the tension rod on the bottom part of, of the bed. Yeah. Well, some of you might have seen this particular room when you came through if you visited the university and took a tour before you even were admitted. Uh, this is one of the rooms that's on the tour offered by admissions. Let's see. How about we go ahead and do the window Let's as well? So that's 46. 46 height. 46 by 44. 46 by 44. Okay. And can you give us the depth as well? Of the ledge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 21 inches. 21 inches. Okay. Fantastic. Well, um, what would you say is something that stands out to you about the uh, future community, especially anything that just comes to mind? For me, um, I've always thought that Futural is a very comfortable building. And what I mean by that is that it has a very homey feel to it. Like you walk in, the halls are kind of like um, smaller or more narrower and um, there's access to your neighbors really quickly um, and there's access to your RA really quickly as well. Um, another thing about Futural is that again in the start of this live um, tour I mentioned that it's very close to the bookstore. Actually if you look out the window that's the bookstore out there. <laughs> so that's the bookstore out there. Very close just across um, West Douglas Street very close to Fulbright, um, very close to where the students get their mail-in packages as well, and it's also very close to the union, um, where they where there's food where there's a food court where there's um, different student organizations as well. 
It's an all-female residence hall as well. And it is an all-female residence hall. Um, this year, um, we have converted Futural into an all-female residence hall. It used to be a co-ed. So it started out as an all-female residence hall, actually, Christopher. Mm -hmm. um, tradition, or classically, originally, was a um, fem female residence hall. And then it became co-ed. And now it's going back to its roots as a f um, female residence hall. Back to the roots. We did have a couple questions that came in. Uh, Joy asks, can you move the furniture? And it is all movable furniture. It is all movable furniture. You can move the furniture. We highly encourage for the roommates to definitely agree upon moving the furniture. I think that's just the very smart idea so that we can avoid any conflicts that may happen in the rooms. Um, so yes, you could move the furniture according to the roommate's wishes, both of the roommate's wishes. Mitchell, do you happen to know how many rooms are on each floor? That's a question Patty was asking. About, um, I would say about 30 rooms mm -hmm. um, around that, yeah. yeah. 30 times 4, 120, that seems about right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Debbie points out that if you're going to be in this hall, you're closest to the sororities. Very close to the sorority row. That is, that is correct, yes. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and, uh, and, and, and tell people that we're excited that they're coming, I guess. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> again, my name is Mitchell Foster. I'm the coordinator for residence education for Holcomb and Futural Halls. Uh, my office is in Holcomb, um, but my office is open to all residents who may need me. Um, you will definitely be seeing me during move-in, so say hi if you're tuning in. Um, and I'm very excited to see all the residents coming in. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to meet with them or interact with them at some point throughout the school year. We have a very small community of people, um, and so I get to really get to know our students. If not by name, then I kind of know what they look like by the end of the year. Um, so that is something that I'm looking forward to. And I'm also very excited to create community with the residents and with the resident assistants that are going to come, be coming in in the next two weeks. Fantastic. Will you wave us out then? All right. Well, um, are, do you mean we, we should go out? Oh, no, no, no. Just oh. wave a goodbye. All right. All right. Just a good okay. old wave of goodbye. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> well, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Um, it was a pleasure for you all to be joining me. It's a pleasure for me to be with you all today. And I'll see you later.